Model steam engines, top tip time, part 81. Rebuilding a small steam boiler and replacing some of the parts. This is a very well made old boiler, obviously built by an experienced model engineer. I found this in the flu tube, I wonder what it is. The design of this boiler is a bit unusual. Halfway down the main flue tube, suddenly there are seven fire tubes. And if you look at the tube plate, you can see how well this boiler is made. Time to put some water into the boiler and make sure that it's okay. What's a bit of a puzzle is that in this tank there is some rust, even though the tank is made from a non-ferrous metal. I'll look at that later. It's time to test the hand pump, which doesn't work. I've oiled the pump ram first because it really was very difficult to move. And it's still difficult to move because the balls are all stuck in both the valve chest and probably in the clack valve of the boiler. Tapping the valve chest of a pump like this often is sufficient to free the balls which just stick to the seats inside. But in this case it's ineffective. So here's a good tip. If tapping the valve chest doesn't work, try this. I'm not cremating the valve chest with this small blowtorch. I'm just warming it up enough to make the metal expand slightly. And when I remove the union nut, as you can see, the pump is now working. It's not working very well because I can see air coming out of the top and really it should just be water. This is a sound you don't often hear. This is the sound of a stuck clack valve ball suddenly being forced off its seat inside the clack valve. So now I can fill the boiler, but the balls are rattling about badly inside the valve chest. I will look at that in a future episode. This, by the way, is just a blowdown valve. I'm checking that it works, and it does. Now, as you can see from this clip, the water level goes down in the tank as I move the handle. This clip is speeded up so you can see it happening more clearly. I still don't quite get the rust, but more about that later. The boiler's nearly full now, but before I use the boiler, I'm going to give it a hydraulic test. I put this hydraulic test rig together quite a few years ago, and it's recently been calibrated at the steam workshop. I didn't bother showing the test on this video, as I've already made several videos about hydraulic testing of boilers. But I would like to mention that before performing a hydraulic test on a boiler, you need to take off the pressure gauge and fit a blanking plug, because a pressure gauge that's designed to read to £80 per square inch really will not like being hit with 120 pounds per square inch, which is twice the working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch for this boiler. The boiler passed the test with flying colours, so it's time to refit the safety valve in readiness for a steam test. But before the steam test, I need to look at the heating system, and this is a little bit on the crude side. It's a sievert gas burner, and it's not in very good condition. It's very old and quite corroded inside. I chopped off the original large fitting and then threaded the end of the copper in the lathe to take a standard 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union nut. It's now time to light the burner. And this is not too good, the burner's not burning well at all. As you can see there's not much pressure and the flame is blowing back very badly. I don't think the baffle halfway down the flue tube is the best idea really. This sievert blowtorch head is not serviceable at all. And here, I've swapped it for the one that I use on my blowtorch. Out of curiosity, I would like to know why there's a baffle fitted halfway down the flue tube. Is it to protect the tube plate if the water level gets low? I don't know, so I'll remove the baffle and see what happens. At this end, there doesn't seem to be much difference. At the chimney end, though, it's a different story. A lot more heat is going up the chimney. I don't like blowtorches like this in steam plant applications. They're actually okay when a steam plant is down inside a scale model boat. But as you can see here, they don't look very good. And using a blowtorch head, it's very easy to overheat the water gauge. I've turned up the gas pressure. I'm putting some more water in the container and I'm going to pump some more water into the boiler because I don't want the water level to drop down below the level of the tube plate. I've refitted the baffle in the flue tube. But if you look at the water gauge, you will see that the heat from the blowtorch is boiling the water through the glass in the water gauge. Because as the gas flame hits this baffle, it's deflected backwards, and that's why it's boiling the water in the water gauge. Looking at the state of the baffle, which is glowing quite red at the moment, there's a lot of heat in there, so that is not a bad thing, but it's not a good idea to boil the water through the glass on the water gauge. Time to see if the safety valve's working.
Yes, that seems to be fine. I don't think the ball stuck to the seat inside the safety valve and the pressure on the gauge is now rising. And at exactly 60 pounds per square inch, the safety valve blows off. So everything's fine, really. Apart from the burner, I'm really not happy with that. This is an old Stuart number no. 4 engine with a mechanical lubricator and a water pump. To be fair though, it's a bit big for this small boiler. And even though the blowtorch is making a lot of noise and the baffle is glowing red, there's insufficient heat getting into this boiler to raise enough steam to run this number no. 4 successfully. And the burner is also generating carbon monoxide, so it's time to turn off the gas, leave the main door of the workshop open and stand outside the workshop looking at the day until all of this dangerous carbon monoxide has cleared. Found in the casing. First of all, I want to have a look at this hand pump. It's not very well made. The pump ram leaks. That could be rectified by putting an O-ring on the pump ram. The pump and the water tank looks to me to be a bit of a bodge. So I think what I'm going to do is remove the entire assembly and discard it. With the pump and the tank out of the way, you can clearly see that the clack valve leaks as well. And what about the rust problem in the brass tank? It was fastened to the baseboard using two steel wood screws. I'm going to have a quick look at this very strange union underneath the water inlet. Like the rest of the pump, it's not very well made, so I'm not going to mess about with this, it's just a complete waste of time. Just look at it, it's horrible, it's badly made and it doesn't work. When I look at the rest of the boiler and the casing, that is expertly made, so I think the person who made this was not the builder of the boiler. Here we have the chimney. This is diabolical. Look at the state of the paint job. I'm also going to discard the jointed pipe from the pump to the clack valve, as well as the clack valve itself. The very well made boiler casing is held to the baseboard using four brass bolts. And these are coming out very easily. With the bolts removed, I lift the boiler casing off the baseboard, and this is what I find underneath. Boiler. You it's will all... notice that the, blo the blowback from the burner was causing the water to boil in the water gauge. What I'm doing at the moment is making a small extension to the flue tube to stop this from happening. Using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a small drum sander, I'm just flattening the head of the rivets so I can fit the heat shield in place. I gently squeezed the heat shield in the vise to make it slightly out of round so I could lock it in place against the rivets. The next thing to do is to discard this clack valve and in its place I'm going to fit a commercial item using Loctite 542 as always and a washer to make sure it fits in the correct position. I just screw the part into the boiler. Although I don't think the cameras picked it up I had a look inside the boiler using a bright light. And it's not particularly furred up with lime scale but I thought it would be a good idea to put it in the acid bath. After removing the clack valve and putting it in a safe place, it's into the outer part of the workshop to put the boiler in the acid bath. I will leave the boiler in this weak acid for 24 hours. And that is it for this episode. Time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.